Okay, so welcome to the Homotopy Type Theory Electronic Seminar Talks. Uh, this week we're very happy to have Jakob von Raumer from the University of Nottingham, uh, moving on to Karlsruhe University, and his title is Coherence via Well-Foundedness. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Dan. Um, so this talk is probably not going to uh, take 60 minutes, if I'm honest, and um, it's probably more like 45 minutes would be an estimate. Um, some of you might have seen this talk before. It's just like uh, like a warning to everybody who's, who, who might know things. Oh, I've, I've read that title before. I've seen this slide before um, because this is um, this is based on a topic um, on which I already gave a talk at Lix this summer. Um, so it's a bit of an expansion on, on, on that talk. So if you if you already seen that talk, might or might not be worth <laughs> watching it again, you be the judge. Um, so this, the title of this talk is Coherence by Well-Foundedness. Um, it's about a phenomenon or about a strategy to tackle some coherence issues that arise from, from, from certain constructions in homotopy type theory. Uh, especially when uh, dealing with uh, set quotients. Um, and it's joint work um, with uh, Nikolai Kraus, who uh, at the time was still at the University of Birmingham and has now moved back to the University of Nottingham. Mm. And I split this talk into, into several, into several sections, um, the first of which has nothing to do with homotopy type theory at all. So we noticed that like the big argument in that we found to make to make those uh, coherence constructions work um, can be formulated completely independently from, from, from the setting it's used in. So um, the first part of the talk will concern a problem which can be formulated in a purely graph theoretic way. Um, and so I'll try to describe the, the problem that, I, that we want to solve. And uh, in the second part, I will uh, state and sketch the proof of this theorem, of this induction principle that we found to solve this kind of problem. Um, and in the, in the last part of the talk, we will apply this induction principle to actual coherence constructions in homotopy type theory. Okay, so let's start with the first part. Um, so as I said, we want to, uh, we want to just uh, make it a pure graph theoretic uh, consideration. So it boils down to the following problem. If we have paths in a graph, like in the one shown on the left, um, and we want to prove some property for all paths, then uh, the usual way would be to just apply induction on the path. Because every path is either the empty path or it's uh, a path where we added an edge to another path. So it pretty straightforwardly admits induction. Um, but if you want to show a property that's just indexed over all closed paths, then this, uh, this approach, of, first of all, seems to fail, um, which is, I guess, which is good because the complexity in this is basically what allows us to do homotopy theory, something like homotopy type theory. Um, but we're now in a situation where we have some, some, some further attributes on the cycles in the graph that actually allow us to have some sort of induction principle. And that's what this talk is about. Um, so the problem made a bit more, more precise is that we want to prove a property for every closed zigzag in a graph. Uh, these closed zigzags, like the one in red on the left, so meaning that we can either follow an edge with its direction or against its direction, um, we will just call cycle in a bit of an abuse of, of terminology from now on in this talk. 
And so we want to prove a property for all of, or for all of the closed zigzags in a graph. So usually in an infinite graph, not in a finite one that I put on the slide. Um, and the two assumptions that actually make it possible to do state something like an induction principle are the following. So the first assumption is that uh, the graph is locally confluent, meaning that whenever we have a span, like the red one on the left side, so any, any vertex with two outgoing edges, um, we can complete this span via our edges to some other vertex. So the relation is locally confluent. So whenever we have a span, we have such a gadget that leads together the ends of the span. And, uh, later in the talk, I will call these subgraphs that the cycles that um, are the witnesses of this local confluence, we call them confluence diamonds, because they're basically shaped like, like a diamond. Um, and the other assumption that we have to make on the graph is the following. We need the graph to be Noetherian or co-well-founded, meaning that we will not have any paths in the graph that extend indefinitely to the right. Or uh, positively, that we can formulate, if we can formulate that, uh, that attribute in a, in a positive, non-negated way, if uh, we use this accessibility construction that's also mentioned in the, the hot book, for example, where we inductively say that um, any, any, any vertex is accessible or co-accessible if um, any, uh, any vertex reached, reached by it is co-accessible. And then we get an inductive way of stating that the whole relation is co-well-founded. Um, so just to, to, to make it a bit more concrete and to see why, why these two assumptions actually make sense, um, let's look at uh, the first example. And then that's an example I will, I will come back to later. Um, namely the example of reductions in the definition of the free group on a set M. So <clears throat> imagine that we're given a set M and then we want to construct the type or the carrier of the free groups, uh, the free group on M. And uh, usually we'll do that by, by, um, by taking lists of, uh, of M annotated with uh, information of whether we want to take uh, the, the element of M in a non-inverted or an inverted way, which is why we can say we uh, see it as a graph or a relation on the list of M plus M. Um, so uh, in this, this type of list, we have, we have elements like the, the ones shown here. And uh, then we will often find ourselves in the, uh, in the position to, to, make, to make reductions in two different places. And, uh, and it's clear from the definition of, of, of this free group construction that it doesn't really matter uh, in which order we do these reductions because we end up with the same completely reduced word in the end. And we know that this definition, this, this relation is co-well-founded because we can only apply so many reductions if we start out with a finite list of elements of M. And we know that it is uh, locally confluent because two redexes always have a common Redex. So yeah, that's the that's the example to keep in mind. We will always think of the relation as the relation on of reductions. Um, <clears throat> and now I will I will I will sketch um, the way we, we can find to to arrive at, at the induction principle to show. Uh, to show properties on all these closed cycles. Um, the first is that if we are given any, any relation on a set A, uh, we want to extend or to lift that relation to a relation on its cycles. And as a second step, we want to show that if the original relation is Noetherian or co-well-founded, uh, that the relation on cycles is co-well-founded as well. And uh, and the third step, we will then prove that uh, if the original relation is, co is locally confluent, then we can use this, uh, this condition of local confluence to split any, any cycle that we could find into a, into a cycle that's smaller according to this lifted relation. 
and this confluence cycle, this confluence diamond that I talked about earlier. And this split into a smaller cycle um, makes it then possible to, um, to prove the induction principle, which we will arrive at at the end of this section. Um, okay, first, let's try to lift this, uh, this, this relation on A. Um, so let's just start out with an arbitrary binary relation on A. And uh, we want to lift it first to the list, to the, to the type of lists on, of, on A. So uh, uh, no matter how the, how the original, original relation was defined, we say that we want to um, have, the, have the lifted relation on the lists defined inductively by the following constructor, where we can take uh, one element of a list and replace it by arbitrary but finitely many smaller elements of that list. So whenever we have some A in a list, we can replace it by some, some other elements, x0 till xk, such that all of these xk, xi are actually, actually smaller or are actually reductions of A. And, um, and then we can find that if the original relation was Noetherian, then the, the, the lifted relation is Noetherian as well. Um, we're still not completely sure if this construction is new on lists, but there's a very similar construction on multi-sets instead of lists, which uh, at least was published by, by Tobias Nipko. Can um, I just ask a couple of questions? Yeah. So first of all, I, I think it's probably clear to most people, but I, I just want to make sure that you've, you're talking about a relation now and you were talking about graphs before. But you, oh yeah, I will just use them <laughs> interchangeably. You're just thinking of when A is related to B, you put an edge in the graph. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And now in, in this list relation that you just defined, can you have no XIs? Can you have zero? Yeah. XIs as well? Yeah. yeah. So you're allowed to just delete an element of a list, in other words. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next. So a shorter list will always be smaller. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, thanks for the questions. Um, so yeah, we have this lifting on lists, and um, but we might remember that we actually wanted to lift the relation on uh, on the type of cycles. And uh, how do we do this? We basically um, do the do the obvious thing of um, if we have a cycle, like the one shown here, then we have uh, can define its vertex sequence. So. Assume that the cycle is based on, on, on some vertex of the cycle, so you have A0. Then the vertex sequence would be, for example, A0, A4, A3, A2, A1. So it's just a list of its vertexes. And um, then we could say that um, and a cycle reduces to another cycle with this uh, squiggle circle relation, with the lifted relation on cycles, if the respective if the respective uh, vertex sequences reduce to another. But uh, uh, there's one caveat if we, if we assume that, that our cycles are, 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 based, are based cycles in some way where we fix the starting and the end point of the cycle. And we have to say that um, we want, we want, we want uh, the, the, the relation on cycles to mean that uh, the vertex sequence of the first cycle, say gamma, reduces to uh, the vertex sequence of the of the second cycle uh, delta, but we we re replace delta by any rotation of delta, so we allow ourselves to to, to rotate. Um, but that's just a technicality. So yeah, so we have arrived at uh, at a relation that's now not on the on the elements of A, but on the on the cycles of A. Um, and then we can show um, that if if the original relation was Noetherian, then the relational cycles is Noetherian as well. The proof of which obviously makes use of the previous lemma that uh, shows the co-valvulness or the Noetherianness of the of the list on lists. Um, and then we will, in uh, the further part of this talk, not actually use uh, the, the 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 lifted relation on the cycle, but we will first take the transitive closure 
then lift it to cycle, and then take the transitive closure again. But since transitive closure respects co-well-foundedness, uh, we know that this, uh, this, um, this tr transitively closed relation is uh, Lotterian as well. Um, and the third step um, would be that if our relation is Notarian, then uh, any of its circles is either empty or it contains a span. Um, take, for example, the, the cycle on the left, uh, where we can find this, uh, this span around A3. Uh, so why is that? Um, note that if we had a cycle in our definition of cycle, where all of the edges would point the same way, um, then it would be a cycle in the original definition of a cycle, and then the um, then the relation would not be Noetherian anymore. Um, so basically, the, the proof of this is just um, mm, just a big inductive uh, just just a big inductive proof as well, where it can can find find a span in in the Noetherian relation. Um, and yeah, if we now if we're now in the position where the relation is not only Noetherian but also locally confluent, then we can write every cycle as the merge of a smaller cycle and a confluence diamond. Um, or to see it in the, in the picture on the left, we can find the span around A3. And now we can use the condition of local confluence to, 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 to split it into this confluence diamond on the right and to this cycle on the on the left which looks a bit like this pattern and shape um, and we see that the cycle on the right is actually smaller than the cycle we started out with because a9 is smaller than, than a3 and a8 is smaller than a3 um, and yeah this this dissection already basically uh, suggests that we can use this to uh, to make some sort of induction principle so um, we call it, we just called it Notarian cycle induction. And so it, it assumes that we have a Notarian and a local confluent relation on the set A and the property P on its cycles, such that P is stable under rotating cy of cycles, meaning that um, P, yeah, meaning exactly what, what it says. So if we have a cycle that's a con that's, that's concatenation of first going along a zigzag, alpha and then going on zigzag gamma, it doesn't matter if we first go along alpha and then along gamma, or if we first go along gamma and along alpha. So changing the base point of the cycle uh, doesn't matter, but it, P is preserved by, by, by that uh, operation. Um, and the other condition that P must fulfill is that P is stable and emerging cycles. So uh, whenever we have we have uh, two two cycles like this alpha gamma and this gamma to the minus one beta that basically share a common part, then uh, we can create a a, uh, a merge of those two cycles by leaving out that shared part and just using the non-shared parts alpha and beta. So that's exactly what happened with this Pac-Man shape on the other slide. Uh, we require p to be to be to be stable under this kind of merge operation. And as a third condition, uh, P should hold for the empty cycle to start off the induction, and P must hold for confluence witnesses. So for the must hold for the diamonds that we get out of the, of the condition of local confluence. And yeah, the conclusion is that then P holds for any cycle gamma. Um, and so far, I kind of maybe only accidentally referred to the ingredients of this. Uh, in, a, in a type theoretic, in a type theory specific way, but uh, obviously um, we can also just just formulate this using type theory, just replacing the word set by by the word type and re replacing the word uh, statement by a proposition by the word type family. Um, yeah. Okay, so now on to um, 
to some 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 applications. So now this obviously wasn't born out of nothing. But it was born out of uh, of, of of trying to um, to prove a certain kind of uh, condition in uh, in in homotopy type theory. Um, and basically, the, the 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 big theorem which we can formulate using this is the following. So say we have a type and we have a binary relation on that type and that relation should be unitarian and lo locally confluent and we will call this uh, the, the, the local confluence diamond get, give them a name with this big L um, and we say that we have some arbitrary arbitrary one type X um, and then we can find a we can use the, the induction lemma to find a, a characterization of uh, elements uh, in the function space from the uh, quotient of uh, A by the squiggle relation to oops, uh, to X. Uh, we can say that uh, this type of functions is equivalent to the type of tuples F A H D 1 D 2, uh, where the, the type signatures of those ingredients of those components of the tuples are the following F is a function from A to X, and H basically just says, uh, says that um, F is uh, weakly, we call it weakly constant on in the relation. So if we have A reduces to B, and then we want F of A to be equal to F of B. Um, and then we can we can uh, we, we need we need this this function to be coherent in two ways. First, we say that all the loops that we can find all the equality based loops that we can find in, the, in A are actually mapped to reflexivity. And we need, as a second sort of coherence, we need that for every span that we can find in A, so this is a bit of a <laughs> simplified notation here. So whenever for every sp so a span that we can find in A, we get, uh, let's call it kappa, we get this L of kappa, which is then the confluence diamond that we get from from for this span. And what we need to prove is that H of this local local confluence diamond is uh, is mapped to reflexivity. Um, and how, how do we prove how do we prove this theorem from the induction statement? Um, first, and I will not go into details of this, uh, we can show the statement in a in a pure hot, hot typical proof that um, we can show a characterization that instead of having D1 and D2 here, uh, it basically uses, uses uh, instead of having the confluence diamond here, it uses, it uses all cycles. Um, yeah, this should just mean instead of D2. Yeah. Um, so, so we would first prove this uh, easier to prove, but harder to use statement. And then we can apply the notarian cycle induction uh, with the statement that H of gamma is mapped to Refl. Um, and so let's see how we can how we can how we can um, how we can use this this theorem here. Um, so let's consider two ways to define free groups. And um, yeah, it's the same same example that I had. At the beginning, so we have given a set M, and um, so now the first, the first approach to, to to defining a free group would be, would be the one that we've already seen, which is basically the, the, the way um, set theory mathematics thinks about free groups, um, namely as a quotient of of lists of the quotients of words on M, where the relation is generated inductively by uh, yeah, cancelling out uh, two successive two successive letters that are inverses of each other. Mm. But then there's also this other this other definition, which is more um, in the style of synthetic homotopy theory, which is um, that we um, define the carrier of the free group as the loop space of some higher inductive type. Uh, which high inductive type is this? It's just the high inductive type where we have one point constructor called star, 
and for every element in M, we have a loop attached to star. And then all the all the structure, all the all the group structure, basically for the for the free group, then just comes from the groupoid structure of equality on this. So we don't have to we don't have to do this uh, kind of cancelling out by hand. And so one important question on this is. Um, how do we reconcile those two definitions? Can we prove that they're equivalent or not? And uh, this is actually still an open problem, or it's even an open problem whether it's uh, provable that that they that they are equivalent. And one approximation that we can can manage to prove is that um, that we only look at the first, like the zero and the, the first uh, homotopy level of those two types uh, to to just ask ourselves the question of whether the one truncations of those two types actually coincide. Um, or to restate this, the same thing is, uh, is the fundamental group of the free group, gen, like as defined in the second definition here, is it trivial? Um, and so I will not, I will not go to the, in, into every detail of the construction um, for this equivalence proof. Um, so there's, there's a canonical map from this high inductive type loop space Fm into the quotients on list, which factors through the one, uh, uh, one truncation of Fm. Uh, so that's not the problem. But the big crux in this whole construction is um, how to define the inverse map. So how to define the map from, from the list construction into the one truncation of Fm. And this is where we can use our induction lemma. Um, so we can give a function m. So we need to give a function f from, from the lists where we didn't take the quotient into, into the one truncation of that m. And we need to show that it's, uh, it maps related elements to equal elements. Um, and then we need to show that h is reflexivity, its reflexivity on, on conference lines. And it will, it turned out that this is much easier because now we have, instead of having all cycles, we have confluence diamonds. And these confluence diamonds are something that we, we can define, we can, we can give ourselves because in the definition uh, of, uh, in the proof that the relation on, on the lists, in the proof that this relation is locally confluent, we can actually choose what witnesses we, we, we give. So um, at that point, showing that H is raffle on conference diamonds is much easier than showing that H is raffle on arbitrary cycles. Um, and basically filling, 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 filling the local co conference diamonds is a like three-dimensional, still a three-dimensional coherence problem. Uh, so, um, maybe it's not too easy to put it on slides, but uh, let's just, just try to uh, to illustrate it in the following way. So let's take the same lists again, like uh, where we have these two opportunities of, of, of reducing. And the equalities here are, are given by, by various instances of H, like various applications of H. Um, and then we can actually, we can, we can see that we could, the, the, the F and the H that we defined are actually just uh, defined by uh, composition. Um, the F is defined by, by composition of paths and the H is defined by uh, what's sometimes called a horizontal composition on the equalities. So we have this. And um, since H is, is defined on, on as a as a, as a horizontal composition, we can um, use the, the laws that govern uh, whiskering uh, by uh, to just cancel out um, the, all the all the elements that stay constant throughout the process. And then we arrive at this again, where uh, the the equalities are something like a, a horizontal composition. And um, yeah, this is just a straightforward application of of uh, the more general version of uh, the Ekman Hilton theorem that uh, yeah two dimensional two dimensional uh, paths basically uh, uh, compute so that's how we prove that's how we prove this and uh, this is 
obviously this is only one of three um, one of three cases that we have to have to consider so having having both of those having both of those uh, reduction opportunities uh, disjoint that's also the case that we have would have something like m m to the minus one m where the, both of the reductions actually overlap but uh, that's in the end that's just uh, like going through several cases um, and so this this one problem of which we found a, a nice proof for its appro appro approximation is just one in a in a whole list of problems. Um, I think Nikolai talked about these kinds of problems in his hot talk a while ago as well. Um, uh, one uh, one other one other one other way to state a, a very similar problem is to to ask whether the suspension of a set is a one type and a third, a third question would be to ask whether adding a loop to a type preserve it being one truncated and, and a slight generalization from that would be that uh, we don't only add one loop but we add set many loops to a type and ask if the type is still a one type if it was before and then all these four questions admit a, a common generalization um, which is about push-outs. Um, to ask if we have a push-out square where the B and the C are one types and uh, the A is a set, is the resulting, resulting push-out a one type again? And like all these other problems, obviously, this is, this is, uh, this is open as well. Um, and the only thing we can do is find an approximation uh, in the same way, which is uh, not showing that the pushout itself is a one type, but that the two truncation of the pushout is a one type. Um, and we can we can show this um, this generalization of the of the previous problem, um, <clears throat> basically by generalizing the proof as well. So what we do is instead of taking instead of taking lists, um, we consider the the encoding of equalities and pushouts. So we consider the cipher van Kampen construction as, for example, Favonia and Max Schulman did. And I think it's also, yeah, it's also mentioned in the hot book nowadays. Um, and basically take those lists of equalities, which, which are, are the core of, the, of this encoding, um, and, rip, and uh, have them as a replacement for the, for the lists of, of the elements of M that we used in the whole proof for the free group. Um, and then we can apply material and cycle induction in very much the same way as, as we did for the free group example. Um, and another potential application which we are thinking of is um, one other very important and very well-known uh, example for reduction relations. Um, Namely, the syntax in the syntax of type theory. If you have a, a internalization of the syntax of type theory inside homotopy type theory, so think of uh, the whole construction of um, type theory and type theory using quotient inductive inductive types, as done by Torsten Altenkirch and Ambush Kaposhi. Um, we have we have equalities as part of these of this quotient inductive inductive type. And um, these equalities can be seen as having a direction because they, they are um, reducing the reduction relations. And uh, we know that in the well-behaved examples of the type theory syntax, uh, those uh, should be locally confluent. And obviously, they should be unitarian as well. And in many, for many purposes, like um, like creating models of type theory, we want we don't only want to state these convertibility relations in, in the syntax as, as relations, but we want to actually quotient the whole. We want to, to quotient the whole syntax by those relations, and this is actually an example for for this could be an example for for a um, for a type and a relation that we can plug into our induction theorem. Um, and one, one thing one could think of doing with it is constructing the standard model uh, 
because we need to uh, we need to um, construct a function from the from the context from, from the context and this internalization into the universe of sets. But as we know, the universe of sets is only a one type and not a set. So uh, we need to prove exactly the kind of coherence that we can tackle with our problem. The only issue is that um, we need to slightly generalize our theorem um, because our theorem is, is based on relations on a, on a, on a fixed type. And uh, usually if we have a, a, a syntax based on, on quotient inductive inductive types, we don't have a type, but we have a whole type family. But, uh, We'll, one thing we think of is just taking taking the, the whole total space instead and, and trying to apply this theorem on, on the total space. Um, so yeah, to conclude, we found a way to tackle proofs about cycles for some definition of what a cycle is in a, in a relation. Um, and we used it to solve some approximations to open problems in homotopy type theory. And most of the contents were formalized in Lean which makes me probably one of the last people that actually use Lean to do homotopy type theory formalizations. And yeah, we, we think we continue thinking about, about applications of this, of this uh, theorem. And we are in contact with uh, Vincent van Ostrom, who told us quite a bit about uh, how uh, our considerations are, are related to, to what uh, people in higher dimensional rewriting are doing. So we're also looking forward to, to, to delve into trying to find connections between those two things. Um, yeah, so thanks for listening and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the talk. Okay, great, thanks very much. So we will keep our mics muted and do our usual visual applause. Okay, and so we've we've only got about an hour for questions, so uh, we have lots of time. So please uh, go ahead and unmute your mic if you have a question. I will ask one. Um, do you think some of the methods will help to move up one more dimension in your approximations? if you study some two truncations or three truncations? Um, I mean, it gets harder and harder than I, so what I started is like looking into, uh, looking into the whole field of higher dimensional rewriting in, in, in general, but I've not made very, very big steps towards that, but I guess in principle it should work to, to to get out of few dimension. I mean, the, the, the big open problem is that whether we can find any formulation that's, uh, that lends itself to, 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 some, to, uh, yeah, to a generalization to, to the whole infinity dimensional tower. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have no idea about that. Uh, I can, uh, can I, can I um, uh, make a comment? Um, just appeared, occurred to me uh, now, um, there was some work quite a while ago uh, in 95 by Hilfting Gogen about um, what he called a typed operational semantics. So they actually used like a, yeah, a directed uh, re typed relation uh, to prove things about uh, type theory. And he, he needed also like a, a higher order uh, theorem sort of a standardization. I mean, they basically um, had a reduction on equality proofs to, to prove certain properties. So I, I, I think it may be uh, in some sense related uh, to, to the approach you, you just suggested. Yeah, it would be cool if you could find, send me a link maybe. Yeah, it's his PhD thesis. I can, I can, I can okay. send, you, I send you a link. Yeah, yeah. He, he did the PhD together with me in Edinburgh. But. No. for Google sometimes. Happens. <laughs> but sorry, can I just say something which I find interesting is, um, so this approach um, means that you sort of reduce a problem, a coherence problem to a sort of combinatoric problem, right? So that's a, one way to go. Uh, yeah. uh, 
Um, and I, I, I mean, I don't know, an alternative would be uh, to try to find a more semantic uh, idea. I mean, how, how do you think, what's the tension between these two in a way? I mean, I mean, I guess the tension is created by the fact that we are, we are trying to, to um, manually, I mean, the whole application with the free group, the whole, the whole problem, the whole problem with the, 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 the whole problem is that we, um, that we have the, we have the whole infinity tower mm. on, on the, on the, on the HIT side of it. And uh, we have some, some approximation of an encoding on the other side. And that's always going to be some sort of combinatory approach if we're using lists to encode, uh, yeah, whether it's the free groups or the, or the equalities and push out it's, Okay, but to me, I mean, the question is the one in the end, right? Uh, is, this, is, this, is this a set, right? Uh, so, so the means is then to go via a uh, writing uh, uh, approach, basically, right? Uh, um, I mean, and one answer would be, okay, we only, in the moment, we only have uh, the syntactic solution. We don't have a semantic yeah. one. Uh, which, I, which puzzles me a bit. I mean, maybe it would be not, I, I don't know what I mean. I mean, maybe. I guess instead of oh. saying a semantic solution, you could also say a more uh, a solution yeah, using more topolo to to topological yeah. language. Topological yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a very computer science approach, so I should like it, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's you take a semantic problem and you reduce it to syntax, right? Uh, uh, but um, I mean, maybe it should be a mathematician should say something, right? Uh, can you not do this semantically, right? I mean, yeah. okay. okay, anybody else? Uh, I, can you hear me? Yes. I, I would have uh, one naive question. So I thought that if you can show that the higher inductive type that you showed us, which is can also be seen as a suspension, as I said, I think. If you can show that this is a one type, then the hit definition of the free group and the classical one are isomorphic. Yeah. Is that, that's that's true? That's the same, yeah, the same. Okay. Or that's a reformulation of the question. Okay. But the and problem is still showing that the, that the higher inductive type, uh, which we call uh, FM here is, is, uh, is, is, has any sort of truncation. So it's, it's, trun it's truncated on any level, so I think. Yeah. So as soon as it is truncated, then it's a one type. No, 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 but there's not been any, many, as far as I know, there's not been any progress to, to show that it's truncated on any level. Yes, yes, yeah. So, um, and the other question is, so for the, for the syntax of type theory, um, do you expect, so I know uh, one can view it as a quotient inductive inductive type, I think. Um, but so do, do you expect if you take instead a higher inductive type using rewriting techniques, can you already show that it's automatically um, zero truncated? I don't know. My, yeah, it's a good question to ask. If, you know, if, if, we, if, we, if we have if we have if we have a high inductive type and, and we find the right way to to make it a set by putting higher dimensional the the right higher dimensional constructors in which which make it well behaved then might okay yeah, so you might add, have to add some higher dimensional constructors yeah yes. Uh, I mean, I have tried to uh, explain this approach where you just put in all the coherences where you basically uh, try to formal form formalize what some infinity category with families is instead of just writing down what, an, what a category with families is. But it's very unclear to me and it's, it's really open whether this will give you a set in the end. So it's expected mm -hmm. to give you a set, but uh, I think this is highly non-trivial, at least for me. 
I, I okay. post the link to the archive paper into. Okay, thank you. That's great. But wouldn't one say, uh, Nikolai, that if it's not a set, then there's maybe something missing? Hello. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I, I have heard you, but I just uh, I, I can't. Do <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think I agree. I would be very surprised if it was not a set, mm -hmm. because then I feel there's something wrong with categories with families. Or well, there's some coherence right. missing, or maybe there's a, there's a, the hidden coherence. Uh, I mean, like. Yes, yeah. Well, it would be very counterintuitive to me. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, uh, you're saying you're defining the free infinity category with families out of the syntax of type theory, and then you want to show that it's already a one category with families. Yeah, basically, this would be the goal. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, now I have a, uh, I have posted a link uh, into the chat. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, if not, we will thank Jakob again. And uh, we meet again in two weeks, as usual. And our next speaker is Yuki Mihara. So I hope to see you all then.